Semu Paul Podcast Productions. Listening to Fragging Out, an Overwatch podcast that pretends to like Overwatch, but is really a glorified audio snuff film where we occasionally complain about Overwatch. Also, we are all stuck in bronzy low, so don't listen to anything we say. Have a nice day, you fucks. Oh yeah, good evening, motherfuckers, and welcome to Fragging Out. This is Lucio O oh, coming at you. Just kidding, everybody. This is Kinder. Welcome to Fragging Out. I'm here with my co-host, Kibby, actually recording this intro in post because we forgot to start recording early. So I'm going to go ahead and give you the rundown of the show right quick before we begin. So the first topic on the list, topic one, changes. We're going to give you the latest rundown on balance updates and our impressions of them. Shortly after that, we're going to talk about the brand new hotness, Brigitte, entering the fray as a new hero. And we've got some information for you guys. This is actually a little, little bit late getting edited and released. Uh, but during the streaming, we had all this information before pretty much everybody else uh, because I spent a whole lot of time running numbers in the testing area in the training zone, uh, getting a breakdown for you. So these numbers aren't going to be official, but they are going to be pretty damn close. And we'll actually probably spend the majority of the show talking about Brigitte and her effect on the meta, or her effect on the game, how things are going to change. And then, of course, in closing, as always, we're going to talk about the future of Fragging Out and get you all those links so you can get your Fragging Out fix whenever the hell you feel like. All right, Kibby, you want to go ahead and bring us in with our first topic? Yeah, let's go ahead and do it. Topic number one, ch changes the latest balance and impressions. Uh, just a quick rundown of patch notes and a couple changes to uh, characters that have happened since last time we recorded. Um, I actually haven't been studying the uh, patch notes as closely as I should have been recently. I know that they're uh, changing some stuff with Sombra. We've got some patch notes for Doomfist and May. Um, and it does look like the most <laughs> changes will be coming to Sombra. Uh, oh, thank fuck. Dude, I, I, I've already noticed. Um, I mean, I assume it's released already. I'm not sure, but... It, it has gone live as of the day before yesterday. Okay, the the biggest thing that I've noticed playing Sombra already, <laughs> which actually happened to me before I played Sombra, um, before if you hacked a Farah, she could still use her her flight, but she couldn't use the abilities. Right. Um, at least that's what I've seen. Now she can't even fly. If you hack a hack a Farah, she can't even lift off the ground. Right, um, and it's beautiful. So that was, it is. Oh, a godsend. Godson. So that's the first she thing. She is now the like the ultimate mobility denier. Um, but before that, we're going to go ahead and get into uh, Doomfest and May uh, before we get into Sombra because she's going to be the most substantial topic. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, you know, first on the list is going to be Doomfist. Uh, one thing that I have always had an issue with with Doomfist was his rate of fire. It takes so long to reload that shotgun on his arm. I mean, it looks like the hand cannon ammo recovery rate is actually going to be increased now from 0.8 seconds to 0.65 seconds, which is going to be, I personally think, a pretty big game changer for Doomfist, uh, who is a character we've had issues with since he's been released. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He's he's riding that fine line between being useless and being OP as fuck. Um, if you're a really good Doomfist and you got the, got the combo ability and you know everything, he's fucking unstoppable because you can't catch him you know if if you use your escapes properly doomfist is really hard to chase down and really the only thing to counter him which is one reason i think that sombra was buffed is to hack him because then he becomes basically useless um so she's definitely his biggest counter arisa turned out to not be as good a counter to him as she could have been because he can just punch right through shields and if he waits for her um What's it called? Her, her fucking armor ability, whatever the hell it's called. The uh, thing where she puts her arm up. <laughs> I can't what it's called. But uh, if that's on cooldown and it's fairly easy to tell when it is, uh, then she can't really do anything against him. She can halt him, but I mean, that doesn't do as much as you would think. Yeah. Uh, so Sombra's really the biggest Doomfist counter. And 
I think that's a good safe buff to him uh that is going to keep him kind of on that line of viability uh very high skill ceiling uh, even higher i would say than genji um so i i think they ought to keep him that way doom fist can be good in the right hands um i might actually need to real quick before we continue on i might need to plug in my computer because my connection keeps dropping here that's fine uh, while you're doing that, I'll go ahead and uh, give the May rundown. So May, the yeah, patch notes... it seems to be doing decent now, but I'm going to go ahead and plug it in. All right. So as far as the patch notes on May, her, her freeze or slow duration has increased from one second to one and a half seconds. What that means is uh, that the time from her starting to freeze you, she you know, you slow down for one second, uh, even if she doesn't track you. Uh, so as long as she's still... as if she tracks you, if she hits you with a freeze at all, then now you slow down for 1.5 seconds, which makes you easier to track, uh, stops your escapes a little bit better. Uh, so she makes her a better counter to Genji and perhaps even Doomfist if she can catch him. He's kind of hard to catch with a May. But um, so that's a really good buff for her. Um, also, her alternate fire, which is her uh, icicle of death, uh, now costs 20 ammo instead of 25, which is uh, more substantial than you would think. I believe that gives her an entire extra icicle um, in her pack there. Yeah. So, you know, you can freeze the shit out of people for a good second now and, you know, get that extra ice pick off. And uh, if you're really good with her, you can get the freeze plus two shots into a head. So uh, you can almost take down a tank solo with May with a single freeze. Uh, it's a hard technique to do, but... Um, I think it was prepared to attack their podcast uh, that I learned that little tidbit on. They had a uh, May Pro on. If I'm not mistaken, I, it may not have been them. It may have been um, uh, I Play Games' podcast. Uh, sorry, guys. I can't remember the podcast right now. <laughs> Please forgive me. I, I know I'm part of the community. I know I'm supposed to know this stuff, but God, there's so many. Um, I'm looking for their Discord right now. Omnic Lab. <laughs> Matter of fact, it was Omnic go. Lab for sure uh, that I learned that little tidbit on. Uh, shout out, you guys. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I, I think May is getting a, a nice little buff there. Um, not huge, but definitely a much needed viability buff. Uh, what do you think about that, Kimmy? Um, you know, I'm sure you out of everybody knows May has, uh, been <laughs> one of my least favorite characters in this game. Um, but recently I've really started to like her. I, I have been getting into mystery heroes a lot over the past couple months trying to expand my range of character play uh, away from Dave, obviously, and I've really been enjoying May. Um, the biggest issue I have found with her is that freeze time. You can, you know, freeze a Reinhardt, and if he's at 300 health, good luck killing him uh, because he's yeah. going to be, you know, oh yeah, unfrozen before you can pop off a second shot. Um, but May with those headshots, man, it's almost instant on any squishy. So I think that extra, the extra shot in her uh, her reload there will help. Oh um, yeah, definitely. Yeah, yeah, and it's I mean if you're if you're playing as May and you get stuck uh, two on one, uh, you can freeze one person. But there, by the time you get away or by the time that person unfreezes, you're pretty much out there alone. So I really like this new buff that's coming out to her, and I think it'll help a lot. Um, actually kind of makes me look forward to playing her a little bit more which i hate to admit but <laughs> uh, may may is difficult to get right but uh she is pretty deadly and very scary in right hands probably the best duelist in the game 1v1 yeah um the only other person i could say that might give may a run for her money is uh is moira um if you play moira right you know when to uh flash out flash in i'd say that's probably may's biggest uh biggest enemy there uh but other than that she is she's a great 1v1 character um she's very versatile uh very hard to get used to uh right off the bat i mean she doesn't have a huge cap learning cap but uh she is a very specifically her, her play style is very specific you got to really right. watch what you're doing really know when to go in know when to pop out know yeah. when to hit that free so you can heal yourself um which one thing I constantly have trouble with is uh, I'll pop in uh, to a little ice block to heal myself. And if there's a Hanzo within 10 feet of me, I'm dead as soon as I <laughs> freeze. So that's that's the only thing I've had an issue with. But other than that, I'm really, I'm really starting to like May. Still think D.Va is... Uh... 
Yeah. <laughs> May's actually a fairly it. decent counter to D.Va, though. Yeah. No, she is. Um, I don't have nearly as much issue with May <coughs> as D.Va as I do still, still Reaper, man. For whatever reason, I can't get away from a Reaper. But uh, May, May is always a problem causer amongst the mayhem she's always one to watch out for and if she's on the field and there's a decent may play or a decent player playing may it's definitely going to cause an issue oh yeah for sure and uh moving on to sombra who i have been maining the entire last season uh gotten pretty good with her um i did take a couple weeks off so uh you know hopped on today and wasn't as good as normal uh, as far as actual like skill and awareness and everything goes uh but even with me knowing I'm not, I'm not playing as well as I normally do with Sombra, I was performing better, at least in offseason comps. So, I mean, that, that's that's definitely like a big star on the uh, on the docket there. But uh, she, for my play style, for how I played Sombra in the first place, it's, it's huge. Uh, the alt busts are huge. So her rundown right now. Uh, her EMP is no longer blocked by small objects uh, like signposts, trees, that kind of thing. Uh, I never really noticed that. I didn't know that was uh, such a thing, but I guess, yeah, I guess yeah, it I was. Yeah, I didn't either. Uh, her hack no longer gains ultimate charge from health pack healing, which is big for how you were supposed to play Sombra. So her play style has completely changed now. But her cast time for her hack has gone from 0.8 seconds to 0.65 seconds. Sounds like nothing. But when you have oh, that man. thing every six seconds, I mean, you're hacking like crazy. It, it feels so much faster. Um, and the big one is that she now disables Genji's cyber agility, Genji's wall climb, Hanzo's wall climb. Uh, uh, no, cyber agility is jump, double jump. So uh, yeah, his double jump's gone. I believe that was also was wall climb. So Genji's mm -hmm. mobility is gone. Well, Genji's Genji has a wall climb, but it's very limited compared to Hanzo's. Right. Uh, so I, I assume that does play into that. Right. Uh, Hanzo's wall climb is now disabled. Farah cannot hover anymore. So if she's off the side of the map and you can hack her, she's done. Uh, Lucio gets where hacking Lucio was generally a bad idea before because it really didn't do a whole lot of anything. Now, a hacked Lucio is dead in the water because it disables his song entirely, so he can't speed, no speed boost, no healing, no nothing. His song turns off, and his wall ride is also disabled. So he is basically a just regular walking dude that has a shitty gun. Like, he can't do a damn thing. <laughs> uh, so Lucio being hacked is huge. Um, and Mercy no longer has Angelic Descent. She can't glide anymore. Uh, so all of those are big time for Sombra uh, because those were heroes that you could hack, well, except for really uh, Genji, because ha I hacked Genji was already kind of hurt pretty bad. I'm surprised that they added his cyber agility to the to the hacked list. Uh, but everybody else, it was kind of useless to hack them at all. Hanzo's still kind of eh, uh, but he doesn't have an escape. So if you're chasing down a Hanzo, that's a big help. I mean, uh, really, honestly, the I, I love I love playing Sombra. She's always been one of my favorite characters <laughs> in this game. And uh, the first time I played her, just the fact that I can run in, hack whoever I want, shoot a couple people, bounce out. I've I've always loved that. But I always <laughs> did feel like Sombra was a little bit broken, um, just because of the fact that it only takes away abilities. And before, the only people that really <laughs> were affected by this uh, big time were people like Doomfist. You know, he's right pretty much a squishy with the exception of his abilities his abilities give him that shield so he was one of the only people with the exception of tanks where hacking was actually a good viable play in the game next to the health packs because you could hack those health packs have them pop up charge her out real quick um so I, i'm really happy to see these changes and i think it should have been something that uh should have been implemented a long time ago right um, uh, yeah. I'm wondering if it's going to make her OP, though, because you already had major hacking targets like D.Va was a big target. Reinhardt was a big target. Mm -hmm. uh, tanks were very big targets, obviously. Um, Ana could be a big target, especially if you're about to um, or if, if they grab or something like that and you can get one off of the Ana. It's happened a few times where I uh, hacked her as soon as grab pops and shows she can't nade us before transcendence takes place. Kind of situational, but it's happened more than a few times. Um, so, I mean, there are big hacking targets, but these, this, these new changes adds much more viability to just hacking instead of, you know, hacking for ult. Uh, so it makes yeah. her as, 
just a DPS by herself makes her job a lot easier and makes her less reliant on her ult, which I think was their goal. It, it does, um, but the only reason I say that it won't necessarily make her more OP uh, is the simple fact that she <clears throat> is such a squishy. Um, I mean, really, honestly, it's pretty easy to take out Sombra, uh, especially <clears throat> if I'm playing Diva and Sombra pops in, she comes to try and hack me. All I have to do, boost into her, boop her, her hack's gone. As soon as she gets damaged at all, she can't hack, uh, or the hack stops, rather. Um, so I, I think with her squishiness, it won't be too OP. You can still take her out pretty quickly. Maybe not. Uh, the The thing about Summer though, is you have to play her as an assassin role. You can't play her head-on ever. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's all about having your escape ready to go. You can't go in and have your... Uh, whatever the hell it's called, or her teleport not set up already. Cause if you don't and you try to throw it and you're just fucking dead, oh, you're done. Yeah, you're uh, done. So if you go in and play as an assassin, you know, have your shit ready to go, get in where you need to go. Uh, and then attempt to get a pick and then get out. Then you can, you, you'll do well with Sombra. And that's the only way that I found really effectively mm -hmm. to play Sombra. And now that her yeah. hack disables so many movement abilities and disables so many escapes, uh, it makes her a lot more scrappy on King of the Hill, and it makes it easier to take out individual targets that are out of place away from their group or in the back line, you know. So she's going to have a really good harassment game now uh, if you don't have, like, a Death Ball comp. Uh, she's mm -hmm. still not going to be great against Death Ball until she gets ult, which kind of sucks, but Death Ball is not huge right now. It's not really prevalent as far as I've seen. Um, um, and that's that's why I say that I don't think she'll be too OP because yeah she can run in she can hack people quicker she can bounce out all that I love it it's great it's good whatever that's fine but she does play that assassin role she's only going to be in the fray of battle for a couple seconds you know you're pretty much going to be playing with a five man team and then Sombra who's running in and out constantly so yeah, you've got that, you've got the hack, but really, you know, you're losing that that damage that could be put in there when she's busy teleporting back to her her health pack and running back into battle, um, which I think is is the one thing that'll keep her from being too OP. Yeah, and you know, just just like any assassin type character, she just it's just a high skill cap. You know, it's all about mm -hmm. game awareness. Uh, her other changes are to her primary fire. Her machine pistol spread is has been reduced from three to two point seven. Uh, it actually doesn't feel that like that big a difference in game either. Uh, it's noticeable if you're looking for it. And I was getting more headshots uh, this go around. It felt like, but it wasn't like a ridiculous change. You know, it was, it just seemed a little bit better. You know, quality of life kind of thing. Um, and a very small change. Her opportunist. Uh, that's her passive ability. Enemy health bars are now visible anytime their health drops below 100%. So you always have an idea of how much health they have. Uh, oh, that's nice. It used to be 50%, right? Right. Um, she can't see them through walls until they're under 50% still. Okay. But okay. she can see their actual physical health bar anytime below 100 um, so th that's, that's a small quality of life change and it makes a lot of sense, uh, you know, her being a hacker and everything, but it's informational and th th that kind of goes with her character because hackers are all about information. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think that was pretty cool. And one of the biggest changes was to her translocator or teleport. The duration that it stays on the ground has been changed from 15 seconds to 20 seconds, which is oh. huge. Uh, oh. it was really fucking hard to get your shit down like you had to put your translocator down run in as fast as possible the second you put it down try to get a kill and usually you have like one second left if you can get that kill uh and you're using your translocator to get back out of danger uh that extra five seconds feels like a fucking eternity when you're trying to get a job done like that yeah. um it's very big um huge quality of life change for sombra uh sombra mains uh, that was probably my most appreciated change, even considering the hack uh, time, like the, the time it takes to hack people. Even that change didn't feel as big as Translocator. Uh, so I really, really appreciate that one as a song remain. Yeah, I uh, I mean, really, the only way her Translocator would help if you're trying to get an actual kill is if you threw it around a wall a little closer to someone you were trying to attack or if you took 40 steps away from the health pack you wanted to drop it on uh, <laughs> hit your invisibility and run in uh, that extra five seconds is definitely going to help 
um, especially with <coughs> invisibility, because I think the invisibility is only what six six seconds. Six uh, seconds? I think I it's six I don't know seconds. the exact time. Yeah. Um, which really, I don't think that needs to be changed necessarily. No, nah, it, it's uh, enough time to get where you need time. to go, and not and not more. It's it's a very good time. Uh, yeah. yeah. Very balanced. Well, and like you said, uh, the constant problem I run into is I'd have just enough time to get into the group, hack one person, and then take a couple shots before I had to bounce back or I was dead. Right. So, um, yeah, like like I said, I don't think this is something necessarily that will make her OP, but I think it will make her much more viable as a character choice. Um, I don't know how it is for you, but as far as I've noticed, not a lot of people play Sombra if they have the choice. Yeah, they really uh, don't. You don't, you don't see Lately, her there. Sombra's... You know, lately there's been a summer in every game in the off season because I think people are just testing out changes. Um, mm -hmm. But as far as summer mains goes, uh, every time I check someone's profile, it's something else. You know, I'm, I'm yeah. one of the very few that I've seen that has more hours on summer than anybody else um, for the season. So I I, I, I played summer before it was cool. I'm pretty happy about that, <laughs> and I, I'm really yeah, enjoying these yeah. changes. Um, but other than that, yeah, um, I I think all of these are really good changes. Uh, especially Sombra, I, I think it was much needed with, especially with uh, how they're changing how her ult works and her healing and everything. Health packs aren't a must anymore. Now, map control is big for Sombra, and people don't realize that. Um, I was never really hacking health packs. I mean, I was, but I also wasn't, uh, and wasn't really hacking them for the ult charge. It was almost exclusively for, exclusively for map control. So crucial health packs for the mm -hmm. enemy, even if we're not going to use them. Uh, ones that are on their side that they can quickly access. Uh, I would always try to hack those at least at the beginning of the match uh, to deny that healing for them. Um, and any little extra bit of healing helps, as you as you know, especially when you're trying to push a point or something like that. Um, yeah. So that map control is big for her, but it's also not necessary as much because of the ult charge. You know, you don't have to be like, all right, we don't have a healer now. Uh, we're going to run Sombra, so lose a healer gain this you know you can play a 2-2-2 comp with somewhere now and it's viable mm -hmm. well and uh i mean when i first saw that uh that or when he first said that it wasn't going to uh affect her alt anymore with the uh health packs i was kind of like oh shit that's that kind of sucks <laughs> right but uh then i thought about it and one of the best games I ever played with sombra it was during i i don't know if it was comp or not i think it was but <laughs> we were on lunar horizon and we're holding the last point and this team is just they're barreling down on us constantly just hitting 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 as a six stack just pushing pushing so i'm running back and i'm hacking what i can whatever but i'm mostly looking to hack their tanks you know i'm running hack a tank kill a squishy bounce out well at the end of the match uh we ended up winning but uh you know, two, three minutes before the end of the match, I get a message from this guy. So I kind of ignored it till the end of the match. And it's this dude just shit talking me, shit talking <laughs> my somber. He's like, yo, dude, you need to be running in and hacking those health packs. That's the only thing somber is used for. It's like, no, not at all. So I kind of ignored it. But then he sent me another message at the end of the match and was <laughs> like, what's your problem? Yeah, we won. But come on, dude, learn to play Sombra. So I sent him a message, uh, took a screenshot. I had gold everything except healing we had two healers and a somber uh i was playing with mo actually you didn't she have gold healing mercy. in somber you were playing it wrong <laughs> right uh no uh mo's playing mercy she had gold healing i had silver healing then we had a zenyatta who had bronze obviously uh sent this dude a screenshot of all of my gold medals and then send him a message. Look at all say, my medals. I can't <laughs> exactly. hold all these golds. Look at me. I'm in the I'm Olympics, just bitch. Saying, as a Sombra, <laughs> I don't know. Uh, so I sent him a message. I said, come C-U-M. Come teach me, daddy. So at first, I feel like he thought I was a 13-year-old kid and was shit talking me. Then I sent him that message and he was like, oh, <laughs> oh yeah. So I sent him a chat invite. He joins in. He was like, Hey, uh, so I'm really sorry about that, but if you ever want some pointers, uh, I can help you out. And then me, I come in with, uh, oh yeah, daddy. <laughs> Completely changed <laughs> his tune with me there. So that was my favorite somber moment. Um, nice. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't think the loss of uh, the loss of alt charge with the health packs is going to affect much at all. Um, the health packs are great, cool. You can get them in quicker, but really focus on taking out those tanks. Oh yeah, I, I really didn't notice that much of a change. Uh, I couldn't like force my ult as fast. Like, 
just playing summer like I normally did, I felt like I was getting my ult at about the same speed. Uh, there were times before when I was playing Sombra where I would direct the team like, look, use these fucking health packs, let's get ult because we need it right now. Um, yeah, I was never a really ult reliant Sombra, which is, may not have been the right way to play her, but that's just how I played and I did well. Um, so I don't have that option anymore, but I'm also more effective in my normal play style. So it, I, I really enjoy it. All right, we're coming up on... Let's see, we're coming up on about 23 minutes in the stream or in the recording right now since we forgot to record the beginning. Uh, so that's uh, give or take almost 30 minutes. So that's going to be our break time real quick. When we come back, we are going to get deep into the Brigitte stats and everything. Mm -hmm. I've been and, waiting for a new character. Uh, oh I've got God. so much information Don't. written down. I'm sure you can see it, KB. I got so much oh, yeah. information for you guys. Information you probably have not heard. I kid you not. I sat there in the training area and wrote down every little detail that I could think to write down about her abilities and her ultimate and everything. Uh, so you probably have not heard these stats yet. Like I said, they're not official. They're what I gathered from using the information that the training area gives me. So I know how much health the robots have. And I know there are distance markers on the actual training stage. So... I use that information and it's a quick calculations. We will have it for you in just a moment when we come back from break. ladies and gentlemen hey all right so during the break uh kibi i believe you had a talk with your roommate yeah i wanted to go ahead and drop him a plug real quick for anybody that's watching he uh he's streaming on twitch he recently hit 50 followers which i'm i'm so happy for him so so proud of him he uh just got a cam hookup and everything he's got his obs run he's got a great stream he mostly streams uh fortnite and um uh, Oh, what's that game with all you play the play the bad guy, you hunt the four people. What is that game? Oh, you're talking about Dead uh, by Daylight. Ah, I gotcha. Dead yeah. Dead by Daylight. His uh his Twitch is twitch.tv forward slash J game underscore Z. Uh he's he's a great guy, a lot of fun to watch, very chill, very chill. So uh, if you could go ahead and hop on there, give him a follow. Um, he's doing everything he can to support both us and my personal Twitch. So make sure you hop over and check that out. All right. And of course, we will have uh, plugs for all the Twitches and everything at the end of the show, uh, including Kibby's personal Twitch. And he also does occasionally stream on the Fragging Out Twitch. So, hey, that I, man, I tell you what, I have <laughs> gone through the past three days. I've probably put. 16 plus hours into trying to set my own personal stream up and it is such a pain if anybody's watched the show over the past eight episodes you know that i don't have the best recording equipment <laughs> so uh i'm going through a lot of uh painstaking processes and uh hate anger sadness all all of the above to get this going every so. stage of uh what is it called every stage of depression or whatever it is uh oh, the stages of grief what, I, uh, I was talking, If uh, I'm sure you guys, if you're following us, you have seen uh, your Overwatch today. I was talking to the to the guy that runs your Overwatch, and uh, he was telling me, man, if this is something you want to do, stick with it. Don't get down. He's like, you're going to run into bumps. You're going to run into issues. You're going to deal with hours and hours of hatred and angst and being upset. And he's not incorrect, uh, for oh, sure. Yeah. 
gave me a lot of support. So, uh, you know, definitely hop on and check them out too. But it's, it's a lot of fun, something I enjoy doing. So I'd appreciate it if you hopped on there and checked it out. <laughs> Uh, it's something I've learned in what four years of podcasting now. Uh, shit's gonna happen. You're gonna lose audio. Te te technology is never going to agree with you, no matter how much you think you know. Uh, no. I mean, even starting this show after doing the Saga Pod for fucking three and a half years, uh, we still had issues on startup, and we still do have issues uh, occasionally. So, no matter what you know, you're gonna encounter problems. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, it's, kudos uh, to those big time shows out there that seem to always get their shit out right and just always seem to get their shit out on time. Like, I don't know how the fuck you do it, but I can't. Man, I tell you what, uh, one of the people that I follow, I'm gonna go ahead and give him a shout out. Uh, Tim the Tap Man, I hop on watching him. Tim the Tap Man, love that guy. <laughs> Tim the Tat Man, which I actually I'm working on trying to talk to him, see if maybe he'd be interested in coming. Oh, right, if you can get Tim the Tat Man on the show, I will fucking suck your dick. Like I well, don't uh, even care. <laughs> uh, Daddy needs a good dick sucking, so I'm gonna see what I can do. That motherfucker has ten thousand people watching his live stream right now. Ten thousand. I don't people. doubt it. He's he's ah, shit. He's probably the most popular Overwatch streamer there is right now. And man, I tell you what, I'm going to give that motherfucker a run for his money on the Xbox. So uh, you keep an eye on. Uh, Good we'll luck with that shit. But, <laughs> but yeah, I'm going to I'm trying to see if I can get him on. Another guy that I'm trying to get a hold of right now is uh, Kefri. He's. Uh, well, we'll see what goes on with that. He's got quite a few followers as well. So right. uh, we'll see. We'll see what goes on there. Yeah, I mean, if you can manage to Tim the Tatman, I will actually suck your cock. I, don't care. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to make a trip down to see you here soon then I don't know. Uh, yeah, all right so we'll, we'll see what happens uh we shall see no promises though all right so our next topic as i promised topic two new hotness brigitte enters the fray Ooh, man you want to talk about a babe oh you know what geez. she did she thick. hey <laughs> hey no no that look, look this is the thing i get shit all the time because Zarya with that Halloween skin, <laughs> that Zarya 80s you skin. You know, I can see it. Mm, I can God, fucking dude, see I, it. I get some shit for that, dude. But I tell you what, uh, every time I see that skin, I just get some cold chills. <laughs> you know, I just, like, I can bench more than you. <laughs> I'm like, I, yeah, you can bench me all you want, baby. That's uh, I will crush you like sparrow's egg between my thighs. <laughs> that hair, that hair, that uh, that 80s ensemble man. She's I know so it. hot. She's oh, so hot. With that skin. <laughs> she can fucking crush me between her thighs anytime. She I'm wants putting that to. in the next supercut I do for the show. That one's going in there. I'm gonna have to mark that one down. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Right, let's see. All right, here's what I've got for Brigitte. Her primary fire, uh, she swings around this big fucking like mace thing, or what is it called? It's called a flail. Um, I forget what they actually call the ability, reference to the Bacardi there. It's actually a really cool facility. I've been there. Um, <laughs> uh, uh oh, J Game Z lurking, no sound. Hey, guys, that is my dude j game underscore z i tell you what once again that dude is one hell of a streamer he just hit 50 followers keep following the dude uh he he promised some uh, hey time and there's the follow that. so there it is thank you so much j games keep up the good work let me make sure we have sound yeah well, we've got sound, sound on my end <laughs> <laughs> sound would be a good thing <laughs> you know yeah i, I got sound on my end that. so uh make sure that you have um have your stuff turned up dude uh can we give me some talking oh yeah 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 yeah. i'm uh i pulled up the stream just now uh just to update tim the tap man in the past 20 minutes has gone from 10,000 to 16,000 viewers jesus h christ He's so Let's crazy popular. The he is. The thing is, I've watched his show, and uh, pretty much most of what he does is talk shit and burp a lot, which That's I my think kind I of street. <laughs> <laughs> I think I uh, have you seen I'm, the? Uh, I think it's Oversalt with Tim the Tatman. It's a YouTube video someone did. No, I have to check that out. Oh man, they cut out pieces of this salt documentary and then like put it in like really salty moments from Tim the Tim Tatman's stream. It's fucking hilarious. And then there's a reaction video where he watches this video and reacts to it. It's gold. It's pure fucking gold. 
Uh, but anyway, <laughs> uh, let's get into this breakdown before I forget what the hell I'm doing again. All right, so her primary, she swings this flail around. It's two swings per second by my best estimate. Uh, it has a five meter range on the swing. That's almost exact. It does do cleave damage. So if you have two enemies standing in close proximity to one another, you can hit them both. It takes six, six hits to kill a practice bot, which equates to about 35 damage per hit. Uh, it's not a lot, but it's enough to, it's a really good finisher. Uh, and it's more than you think. Like it, it doesn't seem like a whole shit ton. You're not going to be taking tanks down with her, but, uh, squishies are going to hurt. Um, especially if they're already damaged a bit. Uh, her passive ability called inspire, it heals yourself and nearby allies. Uh, I think the range, it's hard to see the range on it, but there is a small circle where that range is. I believe it's a five meter range, a 10 meter diameter circle around you. Uh, and it will heal you 80 hit points over six seconds uh, with one flail hit. I don't know if that is per hit. I don't think it's per hit. The way it seems to me is when you start attacking, uh, then it starts a six, six second counter. And I believe it adds, um, restarts the counter every time you make a hit. So say you're hitting, you're hitting, you're hitting. Six seconds after you get your last hit, uh, the heal will continue. But if you hit someone a single time, and wait six seconds you'll recover 80 hit points uh as well as your allies around you now uh, uh let me let me ask you this before you continue on with that uh, as far as her attacks go um is she i feel like she would be is she a little bit more of a slow mobility character or is she pretty quick on those attacks uh it's two attacks per second so um that's gonna be 35 damage so that's 70 damage per second uh it's a it's decent damage it's not huge uh if you're in close proximity or you're in a hallway or something you're, you're they're going to be feeling it for sure uh but you're not going to be really chasing too many people down she's really more of a combo character uh which i'll get into a bit uh her e ability the repair pack uh according to the website brigitte throws a repair pack that can heal an ally any healing over that ally's maximum health provides them with armor instead it has a 35 meter range that was hard to figure out let me tell you i actually had to uh walk because there's no uh, the longest distance marker on the practice map is only 20 meters so i actually physically had to walk the entire 20 and do a countdown see how fast she walks uh standard walking and then walk it out uh so it's right at a 35 meter range which is a lot <laughs> Uh, she does 125 healing per shot or 75 shields per cast. Um, so that's fairly substantial healing. It's good burst healing, but it's uh, on a... Ah, damn, I forgot to write the cooldown on that one. I want to say that's a five second cooldown, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, that's one of the things I should have wrote down. My apologies. Now, uh, you, you said healing per shot. Um, so does that mean... She's kind of like uh, like an Anna, or did I did I miss something there? Where she she can it's shoot a, and heal teammates, or it's an auto target ability. Um, basically, you auto target, kind of like Anna's ultimate. Uh, you auto target them, and then you use the ability, and it shoots up to thirty five meters away for that healing. Okay. okay. Uh, and then it goes on cooldown immediately. So it's short burst healing. It's not huge. It's not super substantial, uh, but it's not tiny either. It'll save someone's life if you're in a pinch for sure. Uh, her shift ability is called Whip Shot. Brigitte throws her flail a long distance, dealing damage and knocking an enemy away from her. Uh, it's on a four second cooldown. It has a 20 meter range. Uh, so for illustration, if you're in the training area and you're standing next to the friendly bots, next to the ones that shoot at you, if you're standing directly next to your friendly bots, it will hit them. Move any further back and it won't hit them. That's how far that ability goes. It does, it does give or take about 70 damage it wasn't an exact number because uh i was going by health bars from the robots and it doesn't quite deplete uh the last health bar that they uh that shows uh on there it, it does about 70 damage the robots have about 200 uh so it's a decent little chunk of damage but you know it's not going to be like ridiculous or nothing like that but it does have a five meter knockback which seems about the same as lucio's boop ability uh but it's also a lot harder to hit um and it also does trigger her self-heal ability so 
any damage whatsoever on an enemy seems to trigger the inspire passive uh and that's actually kind of a big deal you get that little that little nice chunk of healing whenever you do that uh she has a shield a la reinhardt her shield covers herself um it's probably what mm, I don't even know what the measurement would be. It's it's enough to cover herself and slightly off to the side. It's not a very big shield. It's just like a tower shield would be. Um, let's see. It has. But it is. It it, it is a. Uh, it's not a personal shield like you'd see on like Star like Star Wars Battlefront. It's it doesn't cover her whole body. It's just a uh, a front end shield. Yes, yeah, so it's it's just a <clears throat> uh, front facing shield. Uh, exactly like Reinhardt's, except uh, a lot shorter okay um it's got uh where is it 600 health uh so it's not a hugely substantial shield but it's nothing to sneeze at either uh it's enough to get you out of uh out of a bind right for sure. and uh you know it's great for blocking abilities you know blocking ultimates things like that so it's good denial for diva ult um a really quick in a pinch thing uh if you got allies around you you can shield them from ults um and probably gets you out of a reaper ult um so that, that's gonna be big for her uh good ult denial tool and her shield bash which was one of my favorite abilities uh what you do is you hold your shield up by pressing right click and then you use left click and what that does once her barrier shield is deployed brigitte can dash forward to stun an enemy now this actually does a small stun almost like mccree's uh, it's on a five second cooldown. It has a five meter range. It does 50 damage and it does roughly a half second, 2.75 second stun and a small knockback. Uh, the knockback's probably a meter, two meters, something like that in game. And it's a very short stun, but it's enough to interrupt abilities and enough to um, give you a slight edge and at least get a hit in. Uh, so it's not quite as good as like McCree's is or anything, but it's definitely, you know, nothing to sneeze at for sure. Um, and the combo seems to be, uh, you walk in with your shield, block the damage, you do your shield bash, and then you hit them with your, um, hit them with, uh, excuse me, hit them with your mace, and then you do a whip shot. That seems to be like kind of the hook combo of her. Uh, it does quite a bit of damage. And her ultimate is called Rally. Brigitte moves faster and provides all nearby allies with armor that lasts until it is removed by damage. Uh, now when you trigger this, it will give you up to 150 armor to herself and all allies when the, within the circle. Uh, after the ult, if undamaged, she has a total of 200 health and 200 armor for herself. Uh, so that gives her 400 health as far as numbers go, but the armor is what, 1.5? Uh, mm. so that's what, 550? Something like that? Yeah, so she has 550 health, uh, after that. <clears throat> the uptime is 10 seconds, but it doesn't take the full 10 seconds to get you all the way up to uh, full armor. And it has about a 20 meter diameter circular area. So it's about the same as Lucio's aura when you trigger your ultimate. Uh, so that's actually insanely good for like team pushes, things like that. Um, I think she's going to be really big on pushing points, pushing objectives, things like that, breaking through choke points. Uh, seems like that's going to be her creme de la creme. And um, her speed seems to increase by about one and a half times um, from what I could tell. There's no real easy way to test that. Uh, well, I guess I could have done the whole walk and distance thing. But um, that, that's about what I get. It's about 1.5 times. It's not huge. It, it's barely noticeable uh, movement speed, but it'll get you out of the pinch if you have to. All right, so... All, all this said, that's uh, that's all the information that I could really gather, I could think to gather uh, from taking her into training. I haven't had a chance to take her in game yet because everybody fucking insta-locks her. Um, but, you know, if you want those numbers, I can post them somewhere. I'll post them on our Discord uh, so these numbers are available to you. And uh, I have a really strong good feeling that these numbers will be about what they report when they officially reveal everything. Uh, they don't even have, like, her artwork or anything. In. There's no fucking skins. There's no voice lines, nothing. She's just fucking there. <coughs> so uh, some of these things are liable to change even uh, very shortly. So what do you think, Kibby? Uh I actually, I'm I'm really excited <laughs> to check out uh, Bridget. I have had, since literally, since the, uh, the Reinhardt Origins video came out, 
I've had an idea that Bridget might be the next character. Um, I didn't know at the time that she was Torbjorn's daughter. I actually, uh, I had no idea who she was the first time I watched that video. Um, but we, I mean, <clears throat> Blizzard has consistently putting the new characters into the videos as they release them. So she was immediately my first, uh, my <coughs> first thought. You know, she was in there at the beginning with Reinhardt. He's explaining everything that happened as uh, she's in there at the very end. <clears throat> so I kind of figured she was she was it. Then I did find out she was Torbjorn's daughter, and we've seen lots of hints as far as, um, you know, weapons go and armor, uh, you know, draw-ups from Torbjorn and Bridget both. So I kind of had an idea that she might be the next character. So I am pretty excited to see that she's coming in. Um, I think that her... Her attacks, like I said, I, I won't know until I really get in and see how quickly she moves and how fast she can throw her ults out and everything. But uh, I, I feel like she's going to be a very viable character. I feel like her, like you said, her skill cap is going to be a little higher, which isn't necessarily a bad thing at all. Um, at this point, you definitely should have some some uh, harder characters to play. Um but I'm, I'm pretty excited to check it out. Pretty excited to have a new support character. I was hoping for someone, uh, hoping for a new tank, personally. Um, yeah, that, that's another thing. She is in the support category, but she plays very tanky. She She's basically a paladin. Uh, well, and that's... that's a yeah, and that's, that's a big part of why I've noticed, you know, everybody complains about support characters. They expect support characters to purely be healers. And that's not what a support character is. A support character is going to be... I mean, really, honestly, you could look at Reinhardt as a support character. He's there as a shield. He doesn't do a lot of DPS. He really, honestly, doesn't do a lot of damage. I've gotten a lot better with him. I get a lot more kills with him now than I did before. But um, I'm pretty you know, sure Reinhardt's at, very solidly in the tank category. Though. He he is in the tank category, <laughs> and I, you know, I, I get that. I agree. But at the same time, uh, it's not... I don't know. It's it's hard to rank some of the support characters as not a defensive character or not a uh, a DPS character. When you look at Symmetra, uh, she's a support character, but she's very much a defense character. She doesn't have a lot of health, so she's squishy. She dies quick, which is why she's considered support. Uh, it's going to be the same thing with Bridget. She's not a tank. She's considered support, but she does seem much more like a tank healer mix. Uh, which I think is something that we need because you have healing characters like Mercy, like Zenyatta, like Moira, who, uh, you know, Moira can get in and out of battle really quick. Zenyatta can do a lot of damage. He can hit that Discord, but at the same time, they don't have a lot of health. There's not a lot they can do to, uh, to push the team a little bit further with anything other than healing or Zenyatta's Discord. So I think it'll be nice having someone that can do a little more attack damage, put a little shield down, um, I, I definitely feel like she's more of a Symmetra type support uh, as opposed to either a tank or a healer, which I think is what we need in support. We need characters that are true support, which is a little bit of everything, a little bit of damage, a little bit of health. Um, so I, I, I think she'll be a very viable character. I'm really excited to see her get out of PTR. Really excited to see her get on uh, the actual game itself. So, um, and looking at past characters, you know, I'm coming up on a year. I'm coming up on my year mark of playing Overwatch. I'm coming up on uh, my birthday, which uh, I actually started playing Overwatch the day after my birthday. Um, I'm really excited to see this new character come into play. And I really <laughs> hope she does play a viable part. I don't know. Um, she playing her uh, just in the testing area at first. I my first thought was like this character fucking sucks. Um, until you really get into her like passive ability, her passive ability is huge. Like that's her biggest part of her kit. It seems like um, because that's how she's gonna do all of her healing. Her E ability is like okay, uh, but it's gonna be really good for like kind of setting up to start with, or you know, just getting someone out of a pinch. Um, I don't know if that ability is going to stick around, actually. I think that ability is going to end up being changed a la Symmetra. Uh, like, her original ability was giving someone shields. Um, I think they'll eventually take that out because it doesn't seem like it is very good. It doesn't really fit her kit as well as her other things do. Um, but her shield, you know, it's it's she's in that weird position where there are characters that do the jobs that she does better than she does. 
But at the same time, she also has fills that weird role between support and tank, you know. Mm -hmm. Well, and that's that's what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, it's it's just like uh, it's just like any of the healers, you know, Zenyatta, Lucio, even Moria. Uh, you know, Moria has a limited amount of healing she can do. Um, yeah, cool. They can all heal, but we all know Mercy can heal faster, <laughs> can heal more than any of the other healers. That's the difference between a healer, a tank, a DPS, and a support character, which is, it's, it's, it's hard for me to look at Mercy as a support as opposed to just a full on healer. That's why I'm, I personally am a little bothered by some of the nerfs that she's gotten recently, because to me, Mercy's never been a support quote unquote character. She's always been just a pure straight <coughs> healer. Um, and that's, that's, I mean, that's why I look for with a support character, someone who can play more than one role. I'm not looking for a support character that is purely defense or support character that is purely healing. You know, we could almost at this point open up a new section for support compared to healers. Right. Um, but it's, you know, it's, it's one of those things where it's hard to call and it's, I'm sure it's hard for Blizzard themselves to deal with and to do. You know, how do you make just a pure healing squad as opposed to support? So, right. and uh, I'm, I'm really glad that they added her uh, her armor abilities because that's going to change things up a lot. Uh, her ultimate, a fully done ultimate, you know, with those extra shields and everything, that's going to make your team essentially invulnerable for a push, which is fucking huge. Uh, pros are going to abuse the shit out of this. Um, and I really don't know how that's going to go. That's going to be her bread and butter is her ultimate because it is so freaking good. Um, and I really don't know how that's going to go. Everything else is just kind of like, okay, I get it. You know, that's, that's kind of cool. It kind of works. Um, none of it's necessarily bad, but it doesn't seem powerful, but her ultimate is deceivingly powerful in my opinion. Uh, and I think that's going to be the major, major game changer, whether or not with her walking the line between, between being overpowered and barely viable. Yeah. Well, and, and one thing that really bothers me, um, the first, <laughs> the first new character that I saw was Orisa and, uh, you know, coming into the game, like I've said before, I, I played a couple times. I'm going to say I played probably four or five times before I really sat down and played Overwatch. I hated this game. I fucking hated this game the first time I played. I was like, man, this is I some still childish. hate this game. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, this is some childish bullshit. <coughs> it's so cartoony. You know, I'm over here playing shit like Battlefield, you know, sniping some motherfucker from 500 meters buddies. away. Yeah. <laughs> And then I'd switch over to Overwatch. It's cartoony. It's childish. It's dumb. It's not childish. It's not dumb. It's not even really that cartoony, to be honest with you. Um, so I learned to I learned to love it within hours of really seeing down and playing the game. Um, but the first new character that came out was Orisa, and I'm sure anyone else anyone else that plays this game feels the same as I do. You've got your set characters, you've got your set game, you love them, you feel them, you just, that's what you want. And then some new motherfucker, this new kid on the block steps in, you're like, oh? Yeah, you seem like you might be cool, but still, fuck you, right? So I dealt with that with, with Arisa. I was pretty open to Arisa coming in. I like the concept of a new tank because I, I started out as a tank main, D.Va. First game I've ever played in my entire life where I wasn't a healer. I was a tank, uh, so it was totally new to me. It was cool to get a new character. Then they brought in Doomfist, and the the very unfortunate issue with Doomfist is that he's been out for so long, but what have they done with him? I mean, you know, they've put out a couple updates here and there and fixed a couple bugs, but he's still, at this point, as long as he's been out, not really that viable of a character, in my opinion, unless you have someone who just fucking Doomfists all day long, he still doesn't do a whole lot. So I'm excited to see Bridget come in, but I'm also very hopeful that Jeff Kaplan and the rest of the Overwatch team will pay attention to how she plays into the game and make sure she's not too OP. Oh, you know, yeah. They're already talking about nerfing. They're already talking about nerfing Moira. They're already talking about making her attack shorter, which personally, to an extent, I agree. You can be playing as Farah. You can shoot all the way up to the top of the map as high as you can go, and Moira can still hit you with her attack. 
Yeah, um, Moira is a little OP for what she does. I think what they'll end up doing is increasing her heal time, uh, increasing the time on her heal, uh, and then maybe decreasing the amount it heals uh, because it is so mm -hmm. powerful and it's great for quad tank and decreasing the distance. If I had to guess on what they're going to do, uh, decrease the distance on her attack because she is so good at dueling. Uh, yeah, well, and I mean, they definitely need to do something to balance that a little bit because right now, the way I see it, Moira's healing is on par with Diva's shield matrix. Diva's shield matrix went from being something great where, oh, soldier, you're going to ult, fuck you, I'll eat that whole thing, plus Reaper's <laughs> ult, to uh, I can ult half of soldiers, or I can shield half of soldiers ult. Um, and that's about the end of it. Moira's healing is about the same. She does crazy damage, which is great. But if you go to heal somebody, uh, you know, you can heal for what, four or five seconds, and then you're out of healing, um, which is fine if you have another healer. But that, I mean, that goes back to the whole point of if you're playing a six man comp and you only have one healer, if you only have one healer, I don't care how nerfed Mercy is. Mercy really at that point is the only viable healer to take because she's the only one who really does healing. Um, really personally, I think we are far, far overdue for a Zenyatta buff. Personally, I agree. I think the only other healer that we have right now that is an actual viable healer, which I did not feel this way starting out, and I have not felt this way up until this mercy nerf, is Ana. Um, I think right now, truthfully, I think Ana is the healer to go with. You're gonna go with the healer. So I'm I'm hoping with uh, I'm hoping with this uh, Bridget coming in I'm hoping they're quick about getting these fixes out and making sure she is a viable character in the game. No, oh, yeah, I'm sure she's gonna spend some time in PTR and get some nerfs and busts before she ever comes out. They always do. Yeah. Well, and I mean, looking looking at the past characters, this is actually what I was getting into earlier. Looking at the past <coughs> characters when they were they were finally announced, they were finally put in PTR. We're looking at about two weeks. And I've done some research, and I think the longest character to sit in PTR so far has been Orisa, which is confusing to me. Orisa was in PTR for three weeks, maybe four weeks, and then she was released. Doomfist was released quicker than that. Um, I assume I assume Bridget will be released faster than that. So I'm, <coughs> I'm hoping they kind of take a little more time to look at her before they actually put her into game. Right. Um, Considering the state of the game right now, they they can go one of two ways with that. They can either go for a quick release to you know get people in, get people playing more, or they can really take the time, make sure she's right first, and you know kind of please the existing crowd. Because I don't know if, I don't know how much they're gaining with new players or anything or people coming back. Mm -hmm. All right, we're coming up on our one hour mark. Actually, we were just past it. Uh, so we are going to go ahead and close out the show for tonight. But before that, we have our final topic, which is the future of fragging out. Uh, our Discord is growing strong. We uh, are now up to an unknown amount of, of members because I can't go in there to disable our cameras. Uh, so we, we've gotten a lot of new members lately. We've become a lot more active. Uh, so I'll give you the, the link to that Discord here very shortly. Uh, our current listenership is growing because we are <laughs> growing with our consistency. Uh, once we get a little more consistent, we will talk about that Patreon a little bit more. But you know, right now, we've got to get more consistency. And as for our closing plugs, uh, actually, before I say that, uh, our new website is live, fraggingout.com. Uh, I spent a good while trying to get that site up and running. Uh, it is now uh, both optimized for mobile and live uh, on your regular desktop browser. It looks a hell of a lot better than the old site did. I mean, you hey, know, it's I'm nothing go special, and, uh... but... Go I'm going to go ahead and say this. If you guys uh, are listening to the recording and you have not hopped on and checked out the Twitch... <laughs> When we're streaming live i encourage you to jump on not even to support us but purely to support kinder um because this motherfucker has put some time some blood some sweat some tears a lot of tears he calls me crying <laughs> all the time uh that's a joke but uh, no really he has done a great job with this twitch he's done a great job keeping this discord going and uh he does a hell of a job with this show um, I'll definitely give him props for that. So if you haven't gotten on and checked out this Twitch yet, please do. And if you haven't gotten on and checked out that website, he has done so much, so, so much to get this website flattered. going. And it looks, man, it looks damn good. 
I tell you what, if I get Tim the Tap Man on, you owe me a blowjob. Yeah, cool. But <laughs> I'm, I'm fucking pretty sure you. I owe you two at this point. <laughs> so, uh, also, if you're against uh, gay sex or gay <laughs> marriage, fuck off. We don't need you here because uh, that's how we do. So, now, really, though, uh, great. Now, one of my best friends is a faggot. Like, come on, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> My best friend's a fag. I can say that word. No, friend, right? <laughs> I'm sure he'd approve. Uh, seriously, though, uh, it's Kinder is uh, Kinder is the one to thank for all this. He's done a great job on the website. He's done a great job on the Twitch. I'm just here to be a dickhead and get a little drunk while we record. <laughs> so, uh, thank you so you got much. The best part. For, uh, <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much for your hard work and dedication, man. I love it, and uh, I think you're doing a great job. And I think all of our viewers would agree. So make sure you hop on. Let Kendra know what you think of his hard, hard work, and uh, let me know what you think of my beautiful, sultry, sweet voice. All right. Well, I just got my dick sucked on the podcast, boys and girls. <laughs> <laughs> I think that uh, exalts me from an actual dick sucking. However, I'll be down there here soon to see you when I get Tim on. So <laughs> We'll see. We'll see. Uh, and again, that website is www.fraggingout.com. If you want to check out our Discord, discord.me forward slash fragging out. Our Twitter handle is Twitter at Fragging Out Pod. And if you're not here watching us live right now, our Twitch is twitch.tv slash Fragging Out, one word. Um, we do stream live whenever we do. Our Discord is the place to go if you want to know when we're streaming. We announce uh, every single time before we start a podcast stream. Uh, we do everything live. Our episodes are edited from our podcast streams. So everything you hear here, you'll hear in the episode. Uh, give or take, minus editing. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, also, I just finished an intro video for our going live in Twitch whenever we start on and Twitch. Oh my God. <laughs> it's the first oh time I've ever God. fucking done any serious video editing and I'm kind of fucking proud of it. Like I, it's, it's not the best and I rushed the second Man, half, but I spent a lot I of fucking time what. on it. You need to go watch that shit. Uh, you can go on YouTube and I don't know the fucking link, but, uh, just Google fragging out intro and you'll fucking find it. Um, I went to uh, quote unquote college for uh, audio engineering and uh, Foley music specifically. I, I, I love doing Foley music, which if you don't know what that is, every single sound, every single song, everything you hear <coughs> in the background of a movie, down to someone walking down the hallway and the footsteps hitting the floor, that is Foley music. That's why I went to school for it. I love it. It's not fucking easy. And for some motherfucker like Kinder who doesn't have a <laughs> goddamn degree to walk in and do the shit as easy as he does, that's uh that is i'll tell you this shit it wasn't fucking easy Man. buddy <laughs> <laughs> i spent two hours uh, on the first 18 seconds I'll, I'll tell you this the first 18 seconds of the video it's a 40 second video the first 18 seconds took me two and a half hours to complete and i still did editing on those first 18 after that uh I, because i had to learn the entire fucking program from the ground up um, oh, it's not it's not an easy thing by any means. And that's that's why I'm saying really, uh, guys, if you haven't hopped on, checked out the Century, if you haven't hopped on, checked out the Twitch. If you haven't hopped on, checked out the uh, new website by now. Well, God damn it. What the fuck are you doing listening to the show? <laughs> Hop on, check it out and give my dude some props because this motherfucker works hard for this show. So all of us, including myself, can enjoy it. You know and don't you worry if you want to find any of this information out including the intro video i will link it on the website uh very shortly uh i should make i will be making a post uh here very soon with a link to the intro video i wanted it wanted it to debut live so it's not up right now but it will be by the time you hear this if you're not in the twitch at the moment uh and i will also link to our shitty youtube as soon as i clean it up <laughs> and uh discord twitter twitch everything else Kibby, I believe you have a personal Twitch you need to uh, give us links to. Yeah, real quick, I'm going to throw a couple plugs in one more time. I know I've mentioned him twice on the show already, but I'm going to throw him one more because it is my dude, and he has been supporting both my personal Twitch and our Fragging Out Twitch, which is where I think we might have gotten a couple viewers from. That is jgame underscore z. Again, that's jgame underscore z. He's a great dude, very chill. I am currently starting my own Twitch, uh, mostly streaming Overwatch. I do a little bit of everything, specifically going to be looking at C of thieves when it comes out two days after my birthday kids march 20th uh that's twitch.tv forward slash kibby x k-i-b-b-e-y x and uh just gonna throw him one more uh one more slight out there so i can try and pull him into the stream <coughs> that's tim the tap man 
when you hit tat, that's T-A-T-M-A-N, Tim the Tap Man, I hope you're listening. If you're not, <laughs> we'll be talking soon, don't you worry, because daddy needs a blowjob, all right? <laughs> so all of our fans, if you're hearing this, go to Tim the Tap Man's channel and just fucking rate it and just spam it. Hey. Go to Fragging <laughs> Out. We want you on Fragging Out. Please go to Fragging you Out. You tell this motherfucker how much you want to hear him on this show, because I tell you what, I've watched him, the Tap Man, and I think he would fit in with this group quite well. Oh, I yeah, we would have fun with that guy. It. Yeah, oh, man. He is... That motherfucker is a trip. If you haven't checked him out, like I said, I uh, I've been watching his uh, stream go on since before we started, and uh, he's up over eighteen thousand people watching his show right now. Jesus so Christ, I'm just saying, if you give a fuck about this show at all, eighteen thousand people would help <laughs> us out quite a bit. Oh yeah, it so. help us out a little bit for sure. <coughs> all right, ladies and gentlemen, that's gonna be it for fragging out. I'm Kinder, and that's Kibby. We'll catch hey. you on the flip side. And if you're still in the stream right now, I am going to play our intro video one more time for you so you can catch that on the way out. Kippy, if you want to go mute and check that out, you're welcome to. Yes, sir. Hey, guys, hop on. I'll be on streaming in about 15, 20 minutes. Might be able to pull Kinder in on some Xbox with me, do some comp matches. Take care, guys. Later. <laughs>